Hey everyone! So, team fighting is supposedly one of the most important skills that you can learn about in League of Legends, but we're actually going to take a look at how that's wrong and instead focus on alternatives to team fighting that are better for carrying. And while everything in this guide will be discussed from a support's perspective, the concepts behind it are applicable to every role. Let's kick things off by looking at a random team fight. We'll give you two seconds. Tell us which side wins. Ready? Go! Alright, probably around 50% of you assumed that the blue side would win, and the other 50% probably thought that the red side would win. This is the problem with relying on team fighting to win your games. When two evenly matched team fights fight, it's literally just a coin flip as to who actually wins. There's an absurd amount of variables going on in a team fight that it becomes nearly impossible to actually predict who will win each time. Let's draw up an example to show you just how many variables there actually are. Imagine you're playing Soraka and both teams are posturing around mid lane ready to brawl. Your Zed happens to be in position to flank the enemy backline, which is good, but then you realize the enemy support is Lulu. She can just polymorph him when he goes in, denying his kill threat. Oh, but Zed bought QSS to outplay the polymorph. But wait, the enemy ADC bought stopwatch. That's going to make it really hard for Zed to kill them. Okay, okay, that's fine. If the enemy ADC stopwatches, your cannon can go in since they'll be stationary and get a huge ult off. Unfortunately, the enemy team has a Lee Sin, who can just kick cannon away during his ultimate. Hmm, but you're playing Soraka, so you can flash silence the enemy Lee Sin to prevent the kick. But if you do that, you'd be in range of the enemy Vladimir, who can get a huge AoE ultimate because your team will all be funneling in and clumping up. Hopefully you get the point. We could keep going, but there's literally hundreds if not thousands of ways that fight can play out. You can have vague ideas as to who will win based on the team comps, but it's solo queue and predicting what actually happens is nearly impossible. Which brings us to the one and only rule regarding team fights that you should adhere to. If the game's outcome will be decided by a fair team fight, you're playing wrong. The outcome of a fight is completely irrelevant as well. As we said, it's a coin flip. Even if you win that coin flip, it doesn't mean it was correct to take it. The only time a fair team fight should ever decide the outcome of a game is when everyone in it is of around equal skill level. You can see how that's not ideal for climbing elo. You don't want to be the same skill level as the people you're playing with. If you're in gold elo and your goal is to get to platinum, then you carry by playing like a platinum player, not a gold player. Shocking, we know. Not only is team fighting incorrect for climbing in general, but it's also terrible for self-improvement as well. Think back to that previous example. Let's say Kennen forgot to rearrange his items. So when he uses his ultimate in the fight, he misclicks Zonia's instead of Protobelt and ults nothing. What can you possibly learn by losing a team fight because your Kennen misclicked? Nothing. Likewise, let's say your Zed Giga smurfs in the backline and kills both Lulu and Ash by himself 1v4 while your team 4v1s the enemy Vladimir. The only thing you learn in this situation is to add that guy after the game and hope that he duos with you. By the way, we released some crazy guides over at Skillcap, which are exclusive only to our subscribers. We have over 700 guides covering everything you need to know to rapidly improve. We also send our challengers into ELO Hell every week to see how they climb out of the most extreme scenarios with the worst teammates imaginable, all wrapped up into courses that you can watch right away. Oh, and if you don't significantly improve while using Skillcap, you get a full refund. So what are you waiting for? Sign up today and escape ELO Hell. Alright, so if you should never teamfight, what should you actually be looking to do? Well, there's plenty of ways to set up win conditions. In fact, literally any action that isn't a fair teamfight is fine. As long as you can reliably control the outcome of it and consistently carry. For example, collapsing on an enemy side laner and killing them, enabling your split pusher to carry, is a great win condition. A play based on numbers advantage is always a consistent way of carrying. You can also use vision control to set up ganks against the enemy bot lane to score double kills. Or you can stomp the enemy bot lane so hard, feeding multiple kills to your ADC. You can then use that lead to just escort them around, killing everyone that comes near you because you have such a huge item lead. Take that a step further and feed yourself so much that the game lags, unable to comprehend the fact that you're solo killing the enemy mid laner as a Jaina at level 6. 
Vision control around objectives is another great tactic to reliably win games. Is this technically a team fight? Yes, but it's by no means a fair fight. The enemy team is constantly face checking into skill shots, making it very difficult for them to fight, thus giving complete control to the red side team. All of those examples are controllable scenarios that you can reliably set up to carry games. That being said, you can't win every situation that you get into. But the benefit of tactics like these is that even if they go wrong, it's very easy to learn from them. For example, as we said, collapsing on a side laner is good. But let's say that you collapsed on a Fiora. Your Aurelia didn't have executioners calling and your ignite was down, so you get 1v2. This takes no skill to analyze why it went wrong. Viora heals a ton in fights, so even with a numbers advantage, be cautious versus her if you don't have Grievous Wounds. Or take the Karma game as an example. After the gank she set up, she and her team chase Vi deep into the enemy jungle. They chase so far that the enemy Yasuo collapses and Viger respawns and joins the fight, causing them to lose and feed the Yasuo. From this example, we can easily take digestible bits of information that actually allow us to improve. The first mistake is chasing after the initial two kills. It's quite early into the game, so death timers are really short. By running into the enemy territory, if the fight doesn't end immediately, Karma's team will very quickly be outnumbered. But more importantly, was Yasuo collapsing on this fight? One might immediately want to blame Cassiopeia, but this isn't actually her fault. Yasuo is a manalist champion with great wave control early on in the game. Cassiopeia is a mana hungry champion who needs items before she can do much. Knowing this, it's generally going to be incorrect to go for early game skirmishes when you have a mana based mid laner versus a Yasuo. Wait for your mid laner to have lost chapter or something so that they can contest his shove. Otherwise, the Yasuo will usually have priority and you will be fighting at a disadvantage. Even better, you can flip that knowledge around. If you have the Yasuo on your team, you now know that they will have lane priority early on. This means that you have more opportunities to take the early river or jungle skirmishes because your mid laner is likely to arrive first. That is, of course, if your Yasuo isn't turbo inting as they often do. See, from smaller skirmishes, it's much easier to analyze what goes wrong and learn how to fix it in your future games. Karma should have just spammed back pings here. There's no guarantee that her team listens, but knowing the correct call is more important than what actually happens. This all being said, team fights will inevitably happen in solo queue for whatever reason. The idea is that you put your team far enough ahead that a fair fight wouldn't really be fair and you're basically guaranteed to win it. Or your team is really far behind and the enemy teams are the ones forcing fights with you having very little say in the matter. The outcome of these fights is unimportant. If you're ever in this position, just remember that the lead up to the fight is more important than what actually happens in the fight. You see, this game, our expert Hector decided it was a great idea to walk into Viger's cage under tower multiple times, dying pointlessly and throwing his lead. Combine that with the overchase that we discussed earlier, and he had a lot of pointless deaths. This made it really hard to carry the game, which leads to this team bleeding out from Trindamir's split pushing, all inevitably leading to this team fight. It doesn't matter how well he played this fight. His earlier actions allowing this to happen in the first place is where the problem lies. We could harp on and on about this, but you should be starting to get the point. Avoid team fighting as much as you possibly can for more consistent actions, which will give you more control over the outcome of the game. And we may as well add that if your team is forcing a fair fight around Dragon or Baron, you should obviously help them. Don't sit in mid lane saying skill cap told me not to team fight. Solo queue will always be solo queue, you just gotta do the best that you can with what you get. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.